Hey guys, it's Kaylee, and for those of you who don't know, I work in a bookshop, and I love it, it's the best job in the world, but almost every time I work, I'd say it works out to about once per shift on average, I get asked why books are so expensive. So today I thought we'd have a little chat about that. First off, this is just pertinent to South Africa, but books are so expensive here, in short, because our government sucks. In South Africa, books are taxed as luxury items, which they aren't in a lot of places in the world. And bear in mind that South Africa also has one of the lowest levels of literacy in the world. So our government looked at these literacy levels and they thought, you know what? A whole lot of the people in our country can't read. And of the people that can read, a lot of them have very low literacy levels. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to make books more expensive so that people can't get access to books, so those that can already read can't improve their literacy levels, and those, of, those that can't read can't have access to books so they can learn to read. Great job, guys. So that's why if you, as a South African, go on to somewhere like Amazon or the Book Depository, oftentimes you're going to find that books are a lot cheaper there, even when you factor in the terrible state of the rand and, ex and convert them into rands, you'll find that often books work out cheaper on Amazon or on the Book Depository or other international sites like that. It's because in, a, in most other countries, books are not considered luxuries because reading and learning shouldn't be considered a luxury, it should be a basic human right. And to someone like me, to whom books are completely necessary to life, I say books are necessary items and therefore shouldn't be taxed. You might not be a reader, so you might not think that books are that necessary, you might not think that books shouldn't be taxed because you might think that reading is a luxury because it's a fun pastime, and it is. But the problem is it's not only novels and books that people read for pleasure that are being taxed, it's textbooks, it's books that teach people skills, it's books that kids need to get in school in grade one, grade two, to help them learn to read, to help them do maths, to help them understand everything that they need to know to function in the world. So many people now don't have access to books like that because they're just too expensive. So a little farm school might have one or two books that a class of 15 children needs to share because they just can't afford to buy a book for every child in the class. Not only has our government made books more expensive, they've also ensured that fewer people are buying books, which lowers the demand for books, which means that the price of books needs to increase so that bookshops can continue to survive and make money. It's basic economics, supply and demand. If demand drops, prices need to go higher. When demand picks up, prices can go lower, because if you're selling more books, you can obviously charge less for them, because you're getting profit from every book instead of just off one book in your shop. On that note, obviously, working in the shop, I kind of have an idea of what we pay for books, as in what we pay for our stock, and then compared to what we sell it for, and bookshops don't put that big a markup on books. They put enough markup on that they can pay the staff, they can pay their rent, and the business can get some money back in to continue to go. In comparison to big retail clothing chains, the markup we put on our books is really small. On that comparison of books to clothes as well, the cost of manufacturing a book, in a lot of ways, is a lot more than the cost of manufacturing a lot of the clothes that we see in the shops, because in clothing stores you have a couple of people who are earning a lot from the clothes, but most of the people making the clothes are not earning a living wage. By comparison, the price of a book has to factor in the salaries of the people selling the book, the salaries of everyone at the publisher, the salaries of everyone at the printing press, I don't know, is that what you still call it? That seems like such an outdated word, but the, the salaries of people at the printers, there are a lot of people involved in the process of putting a physical book together. Another thing is when you look at the cost and worth of a book in regard to how much you pay for a book versus how much you get from a book, reading and buying books is still the most cost effective form of entertainment. I mean, let's compare reading a book to going to the movies, and I'm going to use it as an example because the movies just come out, everyone's all excited about it, and I got the book today. So you buy your movie ticket, that's like 80 rand, that's just working on average because depending on the day of the week you go and if you watch it in regular or IMAX, ticket prices range from 40 rand to 140 rand, so let's say 80 rand as a conservative average, then you're still gonna get snacks, right? Because it's a long movie and you can't go to the movies without snacks. So let's say 60 rand for snacks, again, pretty conservative. And it's what, like a two hour movie? So for two hours worth of entertainment, 
you've just spent 140 rand. That works out to 70 rand an hour worth of entertainment. That seems fine, right? I mean, I know when you're paying for the movie ticket and you're paying for the snacks, it feels like a ripple, because it is. But when you think about it as 140 rand for two hours of entertainment, it's not that bad. Let's compare that to reading it. It is 1,166 pages. The average person reads about 200 to 250 words per minute, which works out to two minutes per page on average. That means that it's going to take the average person over 38 hours to read this book. And this book is 241 rand. So for less than double what it's going to cost you to see the movie, you're going to have almost 20 times as much entertainment. And for a book like it, it actually works out even more cost effective than that because they're probably going to be making a second movie out of this, so you're going to be spending another 140 rand at least. That's, you know, considering and thinking that prices of movies aren't going to go up in the next year or two. So you're going to be spending at least 280 rand on four hours when you could be spending 240 rand on 38 hours. And that's just the first time you read this book. You now physically own the book, so you can read it potentially as many times as you want. I don't know, but to me that seems like a bit of a bargain. And also, something to mention, this is a particularly expensive book. This edition is particularly expensive. The other edition of it that we have in the shop I work in is either 160 or 180, and that's pretty standard for paperbacks nowadays. Paperbacks tend to range from about 160 rand to 200 rand, so although a lot of them are not as dense as it, a lot of them are significantly cheaper, so you're still going to be getting a lot of entertainment for the money you're spending. I'm not denying that books are expensive if you think about it as a single layout of money. Yes, it's it's sad to walk into a bookshop and you hand the bookseller your book to ha ring up and you give them your bank card and they give you your bank card back with your bank balance looking a little bit sadder than it did before. But when you compare it to anything else that you do, it's really cost effective. Even clothes, compare the price of a book to the price of an item of clothing. This top I'm wearing cost 300 rand, and although I've worn it a lot, it's probably going to fall apart in another year or two because it comes from H&M and their clothes are not made to last a lifetime. No matter how much care I treat this jersey with, eventually the knitting is gonna go bobbly, the seams are gonna fall apart, it's gonna start to fray, it's probably gonna start to physically disintegrate. No matter how much I look after it, I've probably only got, at most, another year or two to wear this. I have books on my bookshelves that were printed in the early 1900s. I have books that are over a hundred years old that are still in perfect condition. So this top cost more than this book does, and it's gonna last me three, four years max in total, because I've already had it for about a year. A book is gonna set you back 200, 300 rand, and it could last your lifetime and well beyond that. So stop thinking about books as a single object for the amount of money you're paying. Think about all that's contained in the book. Think about the hours of enjoyment it's gonna give you or the person you're giving it to. Think about how long it's gonna last. And in that way, books are not expensive at all. And, you know, do the same with other things before you spend 300 grand on the top. Think about how long it's gonna last you. Also, yeah, don't forget that books are just expensive in South Africa in particular because our government's dumb and they seem to think that learning is a luxury when actually it's a basic human right. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Maybe you think that I'm completely out of touch with the reality and that books are just way too expensive and that I haven't changed your mind at all about how much books are worthwhile. Anyway, let me know in the comments what your thoughts on the price of books are, if I have had absolutely no effect on changing the way that you think about it, and yeah, just I want to hear your thoughts. I do believe books should be cheaper just because people deserve more access to them, but I don't have any problem with what they charge for books overseas. It's just here that I think books need to be cheaper because our government taxes them so highly. I mostly just have a problem with the fact that they're taxed. I don't have a problem with the actual price of the book at all because I think that it's worth it and I think that they're necessary. And even if you don't enjoy reading, I mean, you can't deny that books are necessary for getting through life, whether it's a textbook or a manual or any of that kind of stuff. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Share it with people you know who think that books are too expensive and I will see you all again very soon. Bye!